Hi, I'm Giorgio, the granular cell. I live in the walls of the afferent arterial, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a smooth muscle cell, and I know what you're thinking, but I don't have the chicken pots. These are just my secretory granules, which help me to do my job of producing renin. I also have mechanoreceptors, which allow me to sense the blood pressure in the afferent arterial. I'm a pretty big deal. Oh look, here comes my friend Mac. What's up, Shorty? Hi, I'm Mac. I'm a macular densa cell. I live in the distal convoluted tubule. As you can see, I am a tall cell and I am closely packed with the other macula densa cells. I have chemoreceptors that respond to osmolarity. My chemoreceptors monitor the NaCl concentration of the filtrate entering the distal convoluted tubule. Cell, and I lie between the arterial and the tubule cells, which means that I am stuck between Giorgio and Mac all day. My job is to send regulatory signals between the granular cells and the macular densa cells. Together, we form the juxtacle marular apparatus. We regulate the rate of filtrate formation and the systemic blood pressure using a hormonal renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. This is an extrinsic mechanism that regulates the GFR. That's right, Martha. Let me tell you how it works. So my secretory granules contain renin. Renin is an enzyme, which means that it acts as a catalyst for a specific biochemical reaction. My renin release goes on to result in the formation of angiotensin II, which is a hormone released by the liver. The presence of angiotensin II then prompts the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone, a steroid hormone. And then... Hold up, Giorgio. I'll take it from here. So the aldosterone increases reabsorption of water and ions by altering the permeability of the distal tubules and the collecting ducts. This causes the conservation of sodium, the secretion of potassium, and an increase in water retention. All of this leads to an increase in blood volume, which ultimately increases the systemic blood pressure, otherwise known as the blood pressure throughout your whole body. Exactly. Remember too that the release of angiotensin II also causes the systemic arterial to constrict which increases the peripheral resistance as the blood flows through the arterioles. This also contributes to the rise in systemic blood pressure. What happens when the blood pressure is already high? Why would you want to release renin? Georgia, are you trying to give people a heart attack? Of course not. It's simple. When the blood pressure is too high, I can sense it thanks to my mechanoreceptors. Then, I just stop releasing renin. That means the renin angiotensin aldosterone cascade does not occur. The distal tubules and the collecting ducts become less permeable to sodium and water, and arterioles dilate instead of constrict. In other words, the systemic blood pressure decreases. Okay, I think I've heard enough from the both of you today. Why don't we stop the chit chat and go back to doing our jobs? This person's blood pressure is getting dangerously high.